everyone in this video we are going to cover is moving to jano is beneficial for you or not so whenever i talk about jano over twitter the first question i got it should we move it and why we should move it and i thought let's cover that topic in this video and again this video going to be quite a lengthy one but i try to cover every aspect of it okay before really deep diving into you know why this is beneficial or not beneficial for you i just want to highlight one thing if you are moving to jano only for reducing your workload unit then i say stop you don't need to only purpose of moving to jano and i know lot of people and even jano team members have specifically focus on only on this thing okay reduce your workload unit then move to the jano but i feel it is not why i am going to cover it later in this video okay let's first understand what is jano jano is a no code back end service it's not no code database it's a no code back end service so if you are familiar with programming then you must have here he is a back end developer he is a front end developer and all these term so the back end developer what what he do in day to day day job he write a logic in the back end be it in python node and whatever the tag he know he interact with the database he build an api using a programming language and that help you to store data into the database and fetch or do the all sort of the logic and also there is one more guy who basically handle uh, server level your whether or that application is to hosted on the aws whatever the cloud you are using one person basically push that code into your uh, aws server and he manages rate limiting or he manages load balancing and everything jano do everything that sort of jano is a perfect backend it also have a database you can write your own backend logic whatever you it handle all your devops issue without hiring any one more person so in a nutshell jano is a true backend let's go deep dive into what are the feature it offer and why i am saying so number first thing come up if you building a very large kind of application you have heard microservice architecture monolithic code and everything if you are if you ever interact with a developer so what is what are the means of microservice architecture is your code is on a multiple server instead of just a one server so if you got an if your app is become so big like you are building twitter and you are uh, hitting a lot of request on your feed getting feed api so what you can simply do copy your code that handle this feed part and store into the multiple server so that whenever any request come it can diverted into the multiple and can easily serve that you can do in the jano second thing is comes is middleware middleware basically means whenever any api hit to any server what it first need to do before actually running its logic so you can define a common logic for every api so for example uh, you wants to block any user so instead of writing that logic into the each api you can write at a middleware level you wants to format or you wants to check for valid inputs like email so to have a proper formatting you can set up in the middleware you wants to restrict any particular ip address or rate limit any ip address right now you can't do this in jano but i hope uh, in the future i can do that is the task of the middleware so you can set up a middleware in the jano third thing comes out if you ever built an application for european countries the first requirement is your server should store should be in the eu region european union region if you ever built any fintech application in india for india or in india the first requirement that comes from the government is your your server should be located into india so everything if you want to do in the bubble you have to buy that enterprise plan you have to pay 3200 dollar per month but in jano even the basic plan 99 dollar you can do it now and you can even choose what location you want to host your server third things comes out the load balancing so as i already told you in the microservice architecture depend upon the load depend upon the from where a request lot of requests are coming you can actually balance your load to which server it goes to which server is not and put a request into the queue everything you can do with the load balancer in jano on prem hosting so lot of enterprise have a very specific requirement they wants to build a internal application but that internal application should not be call from the outside world only the internal employee 
can call it how that does it happen is using a on prem hosting you can host your geno server geno server in the your internal computer next typical requirement with the enterprise thing is they want to use azure only normally geno server is hosted on the google but most of the enterprise wants to host host that onto the azure or aws they can do so you can connect with the geno team and they can help you to move their geno server and whatever the logic onto your server you bring your own server and they will help you to host that code and database and everything next thing is data caching so if you are familiar with the uh, concept of rate limiting data caching is if you are doing a one pub one uh, public api call and it returns you the same result irrespective of any user you want to cache at a cdn side that you can do with the geno and geno do is do it for you next thing is direct database access so geno by default use a postgres ur a postgres database and uh, if you want to directly run your query onto that server you can do do it like you normally write a query in the programming and run it by the code and all you can leverage directly their no code function stack or you can directly write your own query that directly interact with the your database nothing in between next is static ip address so most of the move some of the enterprise wants they wants to have a single ip address so that they can whitelist that ip address and not no one can call your geno server without if they don't have access to the particular ip so geno support for the static ip address so they give you one extra, one ip address for your server geno server and you can whitelist in your organization and you can work with the geno this is a nutshell it's a backend capability if your requirement if your requirement are these sort you require these all of thing then or one of the two or thing then doing in bubble it's a either it's a cost very costly affair or simply bubble do not support it so if you want to build something like that leveraging these uh, features or the, these requirement then only move to the geno don't move unless like i don't think it's very beneficial for you okay next goes to the nitty gritty of these uh, you will say okay you just talk about the bigger bigger thing what if i have a microsoft and i am feeling uh, i should go or not so let me talk about this also first is super fast response so if you have a millions record into your db and you are doing do search for in bubble that will easily take 13 14 second but in case of geno it will hardly take 3 4 second you can get a help with the indexing power of the geno so okay see this video uh, where i have uh, gone through i have uh, 1.4 million records into the geno and i am calling a get api and i am getting a result quickly and i cannot imagine that kind of speed in bubble next thing is i just want to highlight you one tweet from the ele let me quickly show you okay eli has highlighted some of the nitty gritty of the why moving to geno is preferable okay the first thing is return only data that is needed so in the bubble if you are familiar with you have to set up a privacy rules to restrict what need to be sent at a client side but in geno it is not you can simply go to customize response thing and you can select which field need to be uh, sent to the api next one is use evil to concurrent individual field without having to okay this is pretty important so for example you want, you have a store first name and last name only and uh, and now you want to send a full name for the user what you will do in that situation so you can leverage the evil into a query all fields query all records function in geno and simply say first name concurrent with the last name and doing it in bubble it's kind of not possible you have to uh, become a creative about it and or you you have to concat at a client side next is indexing power like create custom index this is super super if you have more than 10000 record in your table you can leverage custom indexing indexing help you searching pretty data fast for example you have millions of record in your db and you want to search on the country name or city name that you have a two column for it if you do a custom indexing search type indexing on both the column then searching on that table is 
quite a fast set of fuzzy search with the field priority it is also it is there and one more important thing the search by so normally in bubble when you do do search for something like that for example i am doing a uh, do search for for example i am doing here search for audio whenever i put a constraint for my first constraint and the, if i put a second constraint that basically means record file url and total duration but if i want to do record file url or total duration that is kind of not possible in gen in bubble you have to do a work around but in geno it's quite easily possible let me just quickly show you so for example i have uh, query all my record for the all types so what i simply do create a custom query create a one uh, pick a one field say id and simply click here and or and i put a any permutation combination with so for example i pick any any other field created at it will say it will check or id or created at is it available in this field whatever the data i just put or you can put a combination of and like and or then or you can run a multiple condition on a and so you have a lot of combination of these kind of thing and also one interesting thing uh, geno have if you one in more interesting thing geno have this add ons so whenever you return any response for example this api return you response like this kind of response and for example this is my uh, foreign key that is referencing to another api another database so what is simply and you want to fetch that record you, so you can use this add ons feature so basically that will fetch record from another table without doing for loop or anything and it's quite fast one more thing i just want to highlight in a simple database you have family with the joins like merging like merging multiple table for example i have a one table customer another table is author and you want to get a record combining both the table so you can leverage by join function like you can choose which table you want to do and do the inner join left join and everything so in that way it's quite powerful and if you understand this concept then you can build any kind of application with geno and that to be a very fast application okay one more thing we use a backend workflow in a bubble whenever we want to process like 20000 records in a table and it takes a uh, at least 20000 second depend upon how what you want to do on each row but doing in geno is quite fast it can be done in less than a second in less than a second you can do that so that that way it becomes a so much powerful geno and also on top of everything geno have a fixed pricing $99 if you go to geno pricing they have a fixed pricing 85 199 not like bubble where you have to pay per workload unit so that is a one more uh, benefit not the sole benefit but one more benefit okay now i comes to your top your question of why you should not so very first thing we discuss is if you just want to reduce your workload unit don't use geno at all so for example you are getting a bill of 500 dollar or 1000 dollar because you are doing lot of workload unit and you want to move to geno because you see it's an it will take a basic app to the 99 dollar it will take a 99 dollar to move to the geno and you have to pay instead of a 1000 if you just need to pay 99 and you are saving 900 dollar per month and if you just take a one month revenue it will comes around how much something around 10000 dollar uh, more than something around 12000 sorry 11000 dollar but let me just stop you here first thing is if you are getting billed for 1000 dollar you can leverage vu workload unit reducer.com so if you go to so if you are building any uh, marketplace where you are getting a lot of uh, cost because people are loading your page any new user when comes it need you need to show them uh, 20 50 product of you that cost you a lot of 
workload unit then leverage this uh, service from co les and it reduce your workload unit bill to at least 90 like they claim to save up to 90 percent but i am saying at least you will save it 70 to 80 percent at least so that is the one service you should check second thing you need to consider is when you move to Jano, it also have a learning curve it not like that you will come on this Jano and start being productive on a Jano in a very first time so you if you see you have to spend a lot of time and if you find bubble uh, have a very steep learning curve then you will find Jano also have a very steep learning curve and probably more than Jano, more than bubble because Jano is all the terminology and everything is very focused on the developer not for the non-tech people so you end up spending a lot of time just to doing stuff that is not going to work and in learning and everything so you will spend your time that equal to the money one more thing i just want to highlight is whenever you build a new product on new tech you always end up doing an in a non-optimized way so if any app working perfectly on bubble there is a lot of chances while moving from bubble to Jano, you will do a lot of hiccups and that may cost you money because for example if you forget to migrate for only one user and he he will come and he see uh, my data is not there then he become disappointment and you just cancel your plan from earning point of view you also uh, lost your customer also so that is also not very good thing one more thing when you move from bubble to Jano, you have to also move your logics and that to your bubble if your app is quite complex i am 100 percent sure that will take a huge time to actually move it so whatever the cost you save in billing you end up giving into that migration part so that is the one thing okay one more thing in bubble you create a lot of private plugin and your app or your app lot depend upon your the plugins that basically leverage a lot of js library but when you move to Jano, right now Jano don't have very good js library support they have a very fixed seven to eight library that you can support and but apart from that nothing so for example you want to leverage open ai fdk you can't do it in Jano. you have to use api not the fdk part of it one more thing and that very small thing in Jan, in bubble you have a schedule api workflow so for example you are building a social media scheduler app for your user where you schedule a tweet for your user in bubble you used to do it simply like schedule for time whatever user has input but in Jano, you can't do it you have to use a different workaround where you will have to use a background task that run for every second and check any uh, post is scheduled for this time or not so these all are the fact that you have to take into the consideration whether Jano is a right fit for you or not. But one thing is sure, if you end up moving to Jano, you are going to actually see the real power of any backend server. Yeah, so that is the one thing I just want to highlight it. And whatever your question, doubt, everything, just put in the comment. I will happy to answer it.